Welcome to the Armani Talks YouTube channel. I'm your host, Armani Talks. In this channel, I'm covering communication skills in order to help you level up your way with words. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. This channel helps shy engineers and entrepreneurs improve the ability to speak better in public, be much more charming in social interactions, and to learn the art of creative writing so they can express their ideas in the written word as well. If those subjects interest you, be sure to hit that subscribe button right down below, hit that bell notification so you stay updated with the latest videos. And if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. Today's episode is going to discuss whether or not others keep on interrupting you. And if you're watching this video, chances are that others keep on interrupting you. This is something that hurts the confidence, especially when different groups of people are doing it. So let me just be clear regarding one main concept. Others interrupting you in a conversation is very normal if it's happening every now and then. Because here's the thing, as we start to mature in our lives, we start to become more solidified in our personality. And personality is pretty much the way that we think and the way that we behave. And when we're interacting with different groups of people, we at times want to express our thoughts at the same time that they want to express their thoughts. So every now and then, whether you're in an interview, you're having a conversation, you're having some sort of dialogue with another individual, you too just want to explain your thoughts at the same exact time. And every now and then, the other person will technically win by cutting you off and going with their stream of thought. Is what I'm describing right now sounding very familiar to you? Yes, because it happens to me and it happens to all other people out there. Occasionally, this is fine. But you're at that stage right now where you understand that this is possibly normal, but what's happening to you is something more in the painful realm, where different groups of people consistently keep on interrupting you, and it isn't one of those laughable situations where you two just happen to have a thought at the same time. In your mindset, it feels like an attack on your character. It feels as though that you yourself are not confident and others are having to pick up the confidence for you. Does that sound familiar too? In this situation, you may want to blame the other people. I look at these people trying to steal my spotlight. But this video is going to shed a very dark truth. The problem, my friend, is you. I want to tell you a story about a boy named Peter, and I'm going to show to you how Peter is going to teach you why you keep getting cut off and what you can do about it. If you're ready and excited for today's episode, go on and drop that like for me right on below. Peter was roughly 15 years old when he was very, very curious about learning how to drive. In the United States, you could get a pre-driver's license where there has to be a guardian consistently accompanying you as you're learning to drive. But by the time you're 16, you don't need a guardian. So up until age 15, Peter was consistently driving with his dad, who just happened to be extremely overprotective, especially regarding his son on the road. But by the time that Peter turned 16, he realized that most of his other friends had gotten their driver's license and they were bringing their cars to school while Peter was taking the bus. By the time that Peter turned 16, he was ready to drive solo. He got his driver's license. He went to his dad's room and said, Dad, today I want to drive the car by myself. Being the overprotective dad that he was, he said, all right, Peter, here are the keys, but I want you to make sure that you're not over here doing anything dangerous. Make sure you're not over here trying to look all cool and stuff in front of Stacy, Billy Bob, and all these other people, because not only is your life important, insurance ain't cheap, homie. You better not get in an accident. Peter nods his head, grabs the keys, and is ready to drive. Now, as Peter is driving, in the initial stages, everything is going smooth. But eventually, he comes near a red light. 
everything seems to be okay. But as he's looking at the rear view mirror, he notices that there's this car that's coming rather fast. Peter's looking at this car through his rear view mirror, but he doesn't exactly know what's going on. Doesn't the car see that the light is red? No, he's probably overthinking this. He continues to look at the car and he continues to notice that the car is coming faster and faster and faster. And at this point, Peter's starting to get worried. And suddenly, boom, the car that was coming so fast rear ends Peter and Peter's head snaps and hits the steering wheel. Peter can't believe what just happened. Did this really just happen? His first time driving on the road and he gets rear-ended like this? He gets out of the car and he could immediately smell alcohol from the other driver's breath. They call the cops and Peter has to call his dad. He calls his dad to let him know what just happened. The dad comes and he lets Peter know, you know, son, this wasn't your fault. I'm not disappointed in you or anything like that. I'm really happy that you called the cops and you called me. So Peter, who was initially very, very scared that his dad was going to yell at him, didn't get yelled at. You would think that everything was resolved, right? Not quite. For some reason, this moment was imprinted in Peter's subconscious mind. Nowadays, when he had the car to himself, he would drive extra slow for some strange reason. And not only would he drive slow, he had a lot of what if scenarios in his mind. He was thinking, man, there was no other cars driving across from me that day. I should have just gone in the red light. I should have taken a right turn, a left turn, something, because I knew that this car behind me was driving too fast. Why didn't I do anything? And nowadays he's driving extremely slow at least 15 miles below the speed limit. One of the days Peter is driving and he notices that a cop is right behind him with the lights on, pulls him over. This is strange. Peter wasn't going over the speed limit. The cop comes to him, asks Peter, hey son, uh, everything okay? Peter looks at the cop. Yeah, everything's okay. I'm not going over the speed limit. Cop says, I know you're not going over the speed limit. You're going under the speed limit by over 15 plus miles. Is everything okay? Have you been drinking or doing any kind of drugs? Peter is angry that this cop would even bring up as such an accusation. And he yells at the cop, no, why would you even ask me something like that? The cop is like, hey son, lower your tone. You know, I smell some marijuana in the car get out of the car. Peter's like, no, I don't do any drugs. I'm not getting out of the car. At this point, the cop pulls him out of the car, puts some hands on him and says, you have the right to remain silent. And at this point, Peter is shocked even more by his driving experience. Eventually, him and this cop is able to work something out. But this memory of the cop hitting him like that and pulling him out of the car is in his subconscious mind. The next time that Peter drives, at one moment he's driving very slow and any time that he sees a cop's car, now he's suddenly driving fast. Slow, fast, slow, fast. And the people that are normally riding with Peter start to notice something off about him. Why is he driving like this? Why is he driving like a beginner? And every now and then, the passengers ask Peter, yo, is everything okay? Do you want me to take the wheel? And every single time someone asks Peter that, it hurts his confidence even more on the driving space. This is something that ties into communication skills. Because what happened with Peter was a moment where it wasn't necessarily his fault. His first accident where he was getting rear-ended, it was by a drunk driver, yet it altered his moves. And to take it even a level further, 
he was holding onto that baggage for the next time that he drove on the road, which caused him to get pulled over by the cop. And this time, the cop once again altered Peter's moves. And the next time that Peter got onto the road, now his friends keep on asking whether or not he was okay, further hurt his confidence. You as a rational person that is hearing Peter's story, what are you exactly thinking? You're probably thinking, Yo, Peter, what happened in the past happened in the past. This new time of you driving in the road is a brand new experience. Just drive in the present moment. It seems like a very logical thing to say. However, you currently are struggling with other people interrupting you, and you may not notice that your whole situation is identical to Peter in a different context. And what I mean by this is, yes, every now and then people interrupting you is completely fine, and it's not your fault. However, you're making it your fault, sort of like Peter did with his first accident. And what's happening is that next time that you're speaking, a part of you is on the road in the conversation, but another part of you is driving 15 miles below the speed limit where you're thinking, um, man, no, this guy's gonna cut me off again. No, what's the point of even finishing the thought completely because this person is going to cut me off again. And you're driving so freaking slow that this time a cop pulls you over, your coworker interrupts you. And it's like, hey, is everything okay? And they just interrupt you midpoint, which further hurts your confidence for the next time. It's identical concepts. And what you need to do is, and it's much easier said than done, by the way, is you need to treat each interaction as though it's a brand new interaction, just like Peter should have treated each new ride as a brand new ride. Whenever you're carrying certain baggage with you to each and every single interaction, you have someone in the passenger seat who is asking, do you want me to take the wheel? And it's identical to someone cutting you off in the real world, because if you're over here uh, speaking like uh, uh, all doubt, others feel like they're doing you a favor by cutting you off. I actually hap had this happen to me a couple of a months ago in Wawa. I'm over here waiting for my sub at Wawa, and this guy comes up to me and in a very aggressive way, he's like, hey, uh, what's your name? A part of me thought it was an undercover cop, just the way that he approached me. But as we started to interact, I came to realize that he was, I believe, a network marketer. And throughout the interaction, he was so freaking nervous. And I had a feeling why. Because in his field, I believe he has to do a lot of cold approaches to different people to get their contact information, to sell them on something. And plenty of other people were consistently telling him, no, no, you get away from me. And he was projecting a lot of that onto me. So eventually he's like, uh, would, you, um, uh, would you want to, you know, I'm like, what, give you my contact information? And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So in this situation, I cut him off to provide a thought because I thought I was doing him a favor. And plenty of other people think they're doing you a favor because you're driving a little too slow, you're driving a little too fast, and you're being very jerky. Treat each interaction as a brand new interaction, the same advice that you would have given Peter, and that's how you eventually overcome the tendency for others to consistently keep on interrupting you. This is the answer. So the next time that you're having an interaction, treat it as a brand new interaction where you are born again. And in this time, you are not always looking over your, uh, into the rear view mirror with fear. You're not looking at the cops in fear. Instead, you're driving on the road. If you enjoyed today's episode and you want to learn more practical tips on how to be much more articulate and confident in expressing your ideas, be sure to check out my free ebook, Six Steps in Order to Become a Confident Communicator. This book is going to teach you the importance of speaking skills, how to develop your writing skills, even create an audio journal, a lot of tips, tricks, and tactics all in one to make you much more articulate. 
grab the free ebook in the description box with a pinned comment right on below. And thank you for joining the Armani Talks YouTube channel.